So let's start our discussion with Digitalis, the genus of plants from which cardiac glycosides are derived. These natural positive inotropic agents have been around for thousands of years. It was in 1785 that William Withering first described the clinical effects of the purple foxglove plant. Well, fast forward to the rad future of 1985, and you'll see that we've hired none other than DJ Foxglove for the event, setting up a sweet Tears for Fears mix, no doubt. The word DJ should remind you of the name digoxin, the prototypical cardiac glycoside, and the only one approved in the United States for symptomatic treatment of chronic heart failure. At the molecular level, all cardiac glycosides, such as digoxin, inhibit sodium-potassium ATPase at the cell membrane. This inhibitory action is largely responsible for the therapeutic effect, as well as many of the side effects of digoxin. But how does this lead to increased contractility? Well, take a look through the door of the gym and you'll see that this high school jog has knocked over a vending machine outside. It's a potassium banana vending machine, powered by three ATP batteries. And it's our recurring symbol for membrane sodium potassium ATPase. It'll become a more prominent symbol in our chapter examining diuretic effects at the nephron. For now, just imagine it as an ATP-driven potassium pump. Usually responsible for pumping two potassium ions into the cardiac myocyte for every three sodium ions pumped out, this ATPase is now inhibited as depicted by the school supervisor as he rushes over, only to find the door obstructed. And if potassium can't enter the cell, sodium can't leave it. See the sodium-ridden salty peanut snack in the supervisor's hand? Principal Vernon, in his usual party pooper fashion of course, has made sure this is a dry party, and the only food available is peanuts, our salty sketchy symbol for sodium. This buildup of sodium at the door represents the increase in intracellular sodium concentration as a result of sodium-potassium ATPase inhibition. Hold that thought, because this increase in intracellular sodium actually prevents calcium from leaving the cell via the sodium-calcium exchanger. This is because digoxin lowers the sodium concentration gradient, which is normally responsible for driving calcium out of the cell. To illustrate this mechanism, we have a student so focused on his sodium-salted peanuts that he's blocking the revolving door. But more importantly, he's preventing this calcium ice cream guy from leaving the event. <clears throat> Awkward. Remember, calcium is our sketchy symbol for calcium. All this increased cytoplasmic calcium leads to a rise in sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium stores resulting in improved myocyte contractility and left ventricular systolic function. Take a look back at the jock who had initially set off this chain of events by inhibiting our sodium-potassium pump. He's flexing his muscles to remind you of cardiac glycoside's net effect of increasing cardiac contractility. 